From Roswell, we're at Town & Country for the title match of today's JBT event. Over here in the scratch division, a chance at history is Cortez Schenk looks to become our youngest scratch title winner ever, but he's got his hands full against top seed Nick Lee, who has dominated this tournament. This is the fifth frame. Tez is working on an open, and he only has 63 through 4, which puts him behind by, what is that, 17 or so? 68 in the third, right? 68 in the third. So he's actually down by 25 right now with Lee working on a strike, on a spare rather. Would like to strike and has struck. For whatever reason, whatever pattern we lay out here at Town & Country, Nick Lee's ball matches up really, really well here. We uh, put out Cheetah in the past, Nick tears it up. We put out Shark in the past here, Nick tears it up. We're on a chameleon type pattern here today, Nick tore it up. He led after after game two, three, four, five, six, seven, and here eight. The talented Tucsonan, the fastest ball, strike ball we have on tour, shreds another rack. Nick in his final season of JBT action, he's 21. Tez in his first year of scratch, has uh, put on a show for all of us all year long. Big break there, doubling up, caving in the big four there. It would be nice if you could see Cortez right now, but unfortunately he's wearing camouflage and we don't actually know where he is. Where, where is Tez? Where, is he over here? No. Tez cleaned up in the handicap division last year and had to make the move up to scratch and certainly no problem with it. Boy, it's the second time on that right-hand lane that he's just completely lost the ball there. Didn't even yeah, miss the head pin left earlier in the match. Much better break to only leave the five pin right there. As impressive as Tez has been, and I mean impressive, he has not been comfortable in stepladder matches yet. He's made plenty of top fives in scratch, but he's had some pretty bad games in the finals and it's you know it's not a reflection on him. It's it's another skill to learn to bowl in these title matches. All of a sudden it's quiet from a really, really busy bowling alley. Now you're the only one bowling. I'm sitting back here talking about you. It's, it's an adjustment. It's something that he will learn as he continues to rack up the top fives as he will. Nick knows what it's like to win. He's won a tournament of champions with us. Oh, how many titles? I was gonna say that I should trust myself. A seven time champ. As the usual Roswell limbo as people walk by. I don't really have any better place to tape from here. When, when ball speed is an advantage instead of a disadvantage, Nick is one of the toughest to beat on tour. Obviously it is here. Oh, almost rolls the two there. Going at a 220 pace, and the best Tez can do uh, is still 220. Uh, what is that? 32. 222 if he strikes out. So still a match, but Lee in command. No problem with the two pin. Successful trip for the Arizonans as Tez beat Aaron Fauché, another Arizonan, in the semifinals. So it'll be one, two, three for the Grand Canyon State out here in Roswell about seven and a half hours from Phoenix so these guys do some traveling all the physical tools you could ever want at that age perfect there he's got to be saying to himself can I just do that on the right hand lane now big shot needs to strike here to stay in this match anything less than Lee's gonna put it on cruise control Oh, and again, again, cut it short. He's going to watch back this tape, and he's not going to be happy with his execution on these, on this shot on the right-hand lane. I wish we were like the full-scale broadcast. If you could just 
watch his approach on the left-hand lane versus these couple shots on the right-hand lane. It's just totally different. I don't know if it's a timing issue or what it is. Well, he has the spare. Unfortunately, he's about to have a second-place plaque as well. Nick Lee, a big-time New Orleans Saints fan, so he's anticipating that this may only be the second best thing that happens to him today. We'll, we'll, we'll see later on. As they might have their hands full with Detroit. Marks are plenty at this point. And uh, well, sometimes that ball speed gets those kind of hits to fall. This time the six doesn't. Tez has 2 of 2 if he maxes out. Spares a winner. If he misses it, he'll need all of eight pins in the tenth, so looking good. <laughs> Perfect spot. That was even better that I kept the camera on you. That was great. <laughs> you ought to be in pictures. <laughs> he's, he's still a loser. He can't believe it. <laughs> he said it, folks. Live internet television. You just never know. I do know that Nick Lee is an eight-time JVT champion. All right. <laughs> Well, more learning experiences for Tez, and, and that that win is coming awful darn soon. Remember, Pete Weber beat a who did he beat? I think he beat Haugen. Oh, a couple of years ago, and then the PDW screamed, "Not against me! He's not getting his first one." Nick probably thinking that on the inside. One of our nicer guys. Cut it short on that lane too. I don't know what's up with that right now. But classic Tez, when, when it goes wrong, he, he gets that smile on his face. And oh well. There'll be a couple thousand other tournaments for him. The devastating strike ball. Nick Lee does it again. This is quite a recovery from Nick Lee. I, I don't know if any of you follow him on Facebook or anything, but from, from where he was about 19 hours ago, this is a, a revelation, to say the least. <laughs> Even Mr. Lee's all cracked up here. <laughs> I really can't say too much more about that. <laughs> oh, Roswell, you've done it again. A uh, decade more of Tez to come if this day belongs to Nick Lee. Keep watching these videos, folks. We're, I hope you're having 10% as much fun watching them as we are. <laughs> Taping them.